Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. I first learned about Colorado Springs Christian School as a young second grader as my dad was finishing at Denver Seminary and I was uh, thrilled with the opportunity to move to Colorado Springs and it was the first thing on my dad's list uh, priority for us. So 1978, 1979, um, I, I was made aware and I joined the community here and in reality I've never left. The most exciting role that I have here honestly is as a parent. First I get to bring the things that uh, the Lord has given me to treasure and steward the most here on earth to Colorado Springs Christian School. Secondly, as an alum of Colorado Springs Christian School, and then also as the Director of Security and Advancement, and in particular, a Bible teacher here. We have uh, college level apologetics that we teach here at Colorado Springs Christian School. The kids get uh, college credit through Colorado Christian University. So our vision is to uh, help develop Christ-centered citizens that will go out and transform the world for Christ uh, in, in, in a nutshell. We want to see a, a genuine surrender to Jesus first, and that is our priority here. In fact, all of our interviews, we start with uh, a deep dive into where the person's coming from uh, in their relationship with Jesus Christ. And that permeates legitimately every aspect of, of what I get to do here. Anywhere from uh, the security aspect, here I'm defending and protecting these people for the purpose of preserving an opportunity for the gospel to go out. I teach uh, God's Word. The kids get credit for the Introduction to Theology uh, course, and so we go deep dive into apologetics for that purpose, such that we have people that can engage the culture and not be swept over by it, um, like, the, like the waves that toss people about. Um, and so, of course, as in advancement, it's, it's fighting to preserve this mission here, which is to primarily uh, reproduce Jesus in others and let the world see him. Our theme and our goal when we talk about apologetics with the kids is to build a bridge to the gospel. Some have been, you know, fairly skeptical. Why do you need reasons to believe, you know, when you, you, can, you can have faith? Well, we place our faith, it's the Greek word pistis, we take it and we place our faith intentionally in something. And that something is the Lord Jesus Christ and his resurrection, which once that happened, it affirmed every, every word, every dot in, in the scripture, and everything that Jesus taught and said here on earth. And so uh, for, for our purposes, as we engage in a defense of the faith, the purpose is to remove obstacles to the gospel in the context of a relationship. Because in that context of a relationship, we're introducing them to the most important relationship they're ever gonna have. And that's with Jesus. You know, we talk about the problem of pain, suffering, and evil, which is really the crux of most questions these kids are going to hear when they're engaged by the world. And I always say that the very first and best first response to the problem of pain is to be there, as Jesus was. He loved, and you know, we get to exercise this as hands and feet. We get to be a physical gospel by loving people, meeting their needs, while also following up with the words of truth. And uh, you know, a person who's heartbroken, who's devastated by grief or loss, their heart is still hard. They're not ready to hear. And at sometimes they even have a heart of stone when it comes to the gospel. And so we have to be sensitive to the spirit to minister. I say, you know, pain, I always tell the kids, provides us an opportunity for ministry, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And it actually plays out that way. Because once they've heard you, once they've uh, had you sit with them and weep with them and, and hear them, uh, you have now opened the door uh, to that eventual very clear articulation of the gospel and the solution that Jesus brings uh, for pro the problem of pain and evil. Well, and I found that uh, in some of the greatest joys I've had are when a student actually understands finally that they're loved and acknowledged by you because of Jesus. Uh, you know, and we compare it to what their peers are hearing throughout the world. They're hearing that they're an accident. They're hearing they're the product of primordial ooze and that they have no purpose for their existence. When you can convey by the gospel the fact that we were created in the image of God, a God that was perfect in fellowship, totally satisfied, he chose to create us. Not only did he do that, he chose to implant his image in us. And if you can convey that message and see it beginning to be received in, in, the, in the children's hearts and minds and in their eyes and in their countenance, uh, the, the joy is uh, inestimable. There are a lot of people of faith, including in the hallways in schools and churches, 
that walk around thinking they're a, a part of the body of Christ because they intellectually assent to the gospel. But it's much deeper than that. It has to make an 18-inch journey from here to here where the Holy Spirit does transformation and regeneration. So the objective is, uh, across the board with all of us, is that we are a Christ-centered institution. And like I said earlier, the reason I bring my children here is because I know they're cherished. My children are not just tolerated here, they are cherished as part of a mission focus for each teacher, each coach, each administrator, each janitor, each security officer, each administrative person up here on the top of the hill. Uh, the focus is we're all part of the ministry and it's, we can truly say it's a calling. It is a calling to do something like this. And to be excited, I was just telling the kids today, this is no joke, I said, I, get, I woke up, and I'm tired and I didn't want to wake up, but then I remembered why I was waking up. I get to come proclaim the truth to people that I love every single day. And, and I see that across the board in the people that engage with my children and in the colleagues that I have here that I work side by side. And I feel like, just like in the military, I'm linking up with my battle buddies and I know that when I head into the fire, I will look to my right and left, they'll be there with me. And I see that comprehensively across our programs and, and in the way in which we engage and bring staff on board. There are 17 of us alumni on staff. 17 that have come back and, and you know countless others that have brought their children here but 17 that were poured into here uh, did other things in their profession and have come back here to pour back into what god is doing here that is profound um, we we you know we maintain uh, quite an engagement with our alumni every year we bring you know several alumni back to the homecoming game and you see somebody out in town or you, you make a connection with, with, with someone that you've not talked to for a long time. Uh, just last week I was at a conference in Denver and one of the pastors up there, uh, Danny Ortley, is a, is a fellow alum. And of course I pulled out of the conference to go hang out with him and just to celebrate what God has done here and continues to do and will do. Um, he's, he's, he's so faithful. It's not, I don't even doubt what he'll do for the future. I know he will. Uh, and he's kept his hand on this place. In spite of us, as humans, God's will has prevailed. I mean, we still see people make decisions for Christ, and it's, it's unbeatable. It's still a mission field, but I tell you, we hold our own here in Colorado Springs as a city on a hill, and uh, plenty of ministry opportunity throughout the state. Um, there is a sense of unity here, and there is a sense that God has given us some, some special ground here in El Paso County in particular. And rather than to sit on our haunches or on our laurels, uh, we see this as a, as, a, as a stepping off point, as a launch point to send productive biblical citizens into the world and to engage the culture wherever we are. Um, we see our, our kids do that. Um, we engage with a lot of the civic leaders. We have such great support from um, our local congressman and mayor uh, in particular in this area. Uh, both God-fearing men, which is, which is unique <laughs> to Colorado. Yeah. Uh, but we welcome uh, what God has given us in terms of I this, this campus. And if you, you remember the, the, the Latin word campus, it, you know, it comes from the sense of a military training ground. Mm -hmm. What we are doing, and I tell people the reason that I am here, the reason I, I put my life online for over 20 years in the military is to preserve an opportunity like this. We are a testing ground, a proving ground, and a preparation ground for spiritual battle, uh, and, uh, and I see that played out here in Colorado Springs and CSCS. Well, and, and it starts with our commitment to biblical integration as something way more than a buzzword. This is an expectation that our teachers can, can take the curriculum that is grounded in God's truth and teach it without just slapping a Bible verse on it, such that as every kid leaves here wherever they go, and we have, we have you know, colonels and you know commanders and, and actors and musicians uh, and doctors and moms and dads and uh, civic leaders and so many others that have gone out from here uh, with an understanding that the bible is not a nice to have the bible is intrinsic to our lives and and one of the expectations we have for our seniors as they walk out the door in our capstone project, they have to articulate to us not only the gospel, but its transforming power, not only a biblical worldview, but their biblical worldview. And then at the very end, they have to then tell us, given what I believe, when I go to be a doctor, nurse, guitar player, or basket weaver, this is my plan and how I will respond in life 
given what I said I believe. Uh, we here have the blessing of so many that join us in our uh, sort of our fundraising army. We call it Joshua's Army. Um, and is sort of a link off of our website. These people can join us in monthly prayer and financial support, and they do. Uh, we uh, have a, a founding principle that was established by our founders at the beginning that we would never charge full tuition. And the focus was to keep Christ-centered education accessible to these parents. Uh, you know, we'd love to, to remove as many obstacles to that as possible. And you'll see that across the board. So many of our students are subsidized or helped because there are ministries and other organizations that want to see kids and parents have the opportunity for Christ-centered education. And so um, every year we have to fundraise a major portion of our budget just to meet operating costs. And, and that is by design. And what a privilege it is to see God fulfill that every single year. I am blown away. You know, I, I always say I'm no longer amazed, but I'm always, well, I'm no longer surprised, but I'm always amazed when I see how God shows up in just a massive way. People are that moved to put substantive uh, support behind us in prayer and in fi financial uh, support. Uh, spiritual warfare, I just talked to the kids about this today. We're actually reading screw tape letters in my classroom. And so, you know, here we see the enemy's battle plan laid out. And, and C.S. Lewis, of course, wrote, wrote it in reverse from the perspective of the, of the demons. And what we're talking about with the kids on a very real level is that the battle is, is not what they see. It's not the peer pressure in the halls. It is the insidious, even more real battle to undermine God's kingdom work. And that takes a constant reminder. My dad used to sing the beautiful song, uh, roll back the curtain of every now and then, show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. Remember, I'm human and humans forget. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord. That is one of our major characteristics as humans. We're going to forget. And so it is a day by day, constant necessity for us to be in the word and to encourage and remind one another that the battle is not flesh and blood. Don't fall for it. Don't buy Satan's line. Know that it's a spiritual battle that we have already won. And that is the heartbeat of, of this guy. And it is articulated in many ways uh, across the board here. We know we're under attack. And honestly, we see the enemy ramp up when we know God's doing something. And I teach the kids to, to be mindful of that, but we also talk about it as a senior staff. That, uh, you know, when we see things amping up, we know God is doing something. The enemy doesn't like it, but he's on his heels and he's losing, and we know it. Not because of us, but because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. We have, uh, you know, a volunteer army. Each of our volunteers is vetted and background checked, but an essential component of what we do here, we can't do this without those volunteers and without those missional servants, even the, the, you know, the, the faithful servants that are part of our team here. Um, but we, you know, we have in the classroom, we have with activities, our entire parent teacher organization is uh, staffed by volunteers and they're so proactive and they love the teachers like nobody's been inside. I've never seen anything like it. And what's kind of neat is there's even alumni on that team that have brought their children here. They're pouring back in as, as members of our PTO um, we have uh, coaches that support in volunteer roles. Some are stipend, but then so many others just support because they love the, the ministry and they love the opportunity to pour into these children by the grace of God. The most important um, issue for me, um, obviously as a parent and as a Christian, I think the, the, the crux of my heart is Christian education. It's defense, it's propagation, it's preservation, and it's continuance, and it's accuracy. Uh, and so I'm so spoiled. Don't tell my boss, but I'm entirely spoiled being here because I get to do what I'm called to do, what I love and what I'm designed to do. And it has eternal impact. Uh, you know, I look at the wall in my, my office. It is nearly entirely paper, don't tell the fire marshal, with pictures of, of graduating students who we've had an impact on and who have gone on and still reach back because they know that they were loved and, and taught the truth here. Celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer his call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV.
This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. 